Chair now recognizes the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Capital Markets, the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman, for four, four minutes for an opening statement. Next week is Law Enforcement Week, and we will honor those who fight for crime in the streets. It is entirely appropriate that we have this subcommittee hearing to honor those who fight crime in the suites. Uh, there were two SEC lawyers who acted wrongfully in the debt box case. They've been fired, uh, and I think that sets an example that will assure that other SEC lawyers do not act similarly. Uh, a disproportion of the SEC's uh, enforcement actions are against the crypto industry. That's not a coincidence. As I said, when Sam Bankman-Fried was indicted, uh, the crypto industry will tell us that Sam Bankman-Fried is a single snake in a garden of crypto Eden, when in fact crypto is a garden of snakes. Recent SEC actions illustrate that. Uh, oh, without objection, I'd like to enter the record this article in Politico, SEC's uh, Gensler, turns tide against crypto in courts. In particular, the SEC has gone after the crypto exchanges. We had a hearing on this a little less than two years ago. I was sitting in that seat over there, and I hammered home the fact that it's not enough to go after the crypto. You have to go after the illegal securities exchanges, and the SEC has begun to do just that. Uh, I would like to see Americans invest in the stock of companies that create a product or service for American consumers uh, rather than this uh, uh, ephemeral uh, effort uh, to create a currency that would rival the, uh, the dollar or other national currencies. The SEC has a $2.1 billion budget, $676 million of that is on enforcement. The SEC's enforcement division secured almost $5 billion. Uh, of that $3.4 billion went back to investors and a billion and a half or so went to the government. But the purpose of SEC's enforcement action isn't to secure fines or even restitution. The main purpose is to deter action. And for everyone who's caught, there are dozens who thought of doing something wrongful and then thought better of it. Now, I would prefer that the SEC issue comprehensive regulations so that everybody knows what the law is in every instance. The main opposition to that comes from the crypto industry, which has fought tooth and nail any meaningful uh, regulation in an effort to give itself just a patina of regulation. Uh, the uh, SEC ought to, by Congress, be given absolute and clear jurisdiction over crypto because that is the agency that's proven itself for almost 100 years to be the best agency uh, to regulate investment assets that are intangible. Um, we have extensive safeguards at the SEC in, uh, dealing with the uh, prosecutorial malpractice. The commissioners themselves have to inf uh, approve investment action. Most importantly, this is enforcement action through the courts. Um, it's entirely appropriate that the SEC has brought enforcement action against uh, uh, crypto and especially against debt box because debt box was clearly uh, a security. Uh, they throw the red herring out that, well, they're part of the crypto world and there's disputes as to whether certain tokens are um, securities. But as the Howey key case uh, demonstrated, uh, nobody claims that an orange is security, but an investment contract where you profit from the work of others in uh, developing a orange grove is a security, and clearly the SEC acted appropriately in bringing this action. The SEC has received 18,000 tips, a 50% uh, increase over the prior year. Last year, whistleblowers received $600 million. We need whistleblowers, and I yield back. Chair now recognizes the distinguished ranking member, Mr. Sherman, for five minutes for his question. Uh, first, I'd like to turn to this list of legislation that we're uh, presumably dealing with in this hearing and point out that the vast, first of all, the vast majority of these bills are unipartisan, and second, most of them have little to do with this hearing. I guess you can call a hearing enforcement and then say any substantive rule that the SEC is thinking of doing needs to be enforced. But this hearing is about the enforcement process, not about the substantive rules. 
So if the majority believes that before we consider a bill, we should have a hearing about a bill, I look forward to a hearing that focuses on these bills. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Volmer says that we are over deterring beneficial actions. I think we're under deterring wrongful actions. And there's no uh, greater fo focus of this uh, than the crypto industry. Let us remember we do not have a perfect political system. The crypto industry has all the money. They make money by literally making money, and they spend hundreds of millions of dollars trying to influence Congress. Those who are in favor of effective tax enforcement do not have a PAC, and uh, the people who enforce our sanctions laws do not have a lobbyist. Um, the crypto industry is very clear. They regard the United States government as a criminal enterprise. And they promise that they will do whatever, uh, using a very effective tool to defeat efforts to enforce our tax laws and our sanction laws. They say that the role of the U.S. dollar, which benefits America tremendously in terms of economic and uh, national security power, is uh, illegitimate, uh, that uh, the U.S. dollar does not deserve this role, and that they wish to partially displace this. Um, and then they've come up with a mixer technology. Uh, Mr. Stark, uh, other than mixing up law enforcement, is there any legitimate purpose for a mixer? No. Uh, I would point out that for hundreds of years, we have outlawed burglary tools Burglars would dream of burglaries as successful as we've seen in the uh, crypto world. We are told, uh, on the one hand, that enforcement takes too long and lags, and then we're told that it uh, uh, that we ignore due process. You can't have due process and speed usually at the same time. But I look forward to working with my Republican colleagues on legislation to perhaps skip some of the enforcement processes to make it a, a, a faster uh, approach. Um, well, Mr. Stark, are we uh, over deterring beneficial uh, uh, actions in our capital markets? I, I, don't, I don't think so, Congressman. I, taking crypto, for example, if the SEC weren't out there deterring crypto and bringing all of these cases, by the way, most of which, if, in fact, I would argue all of which they've won, if the SEC weren't out there, investors would just lose more and more money, and there would be tremendous systemic risk to U.S. capital markets. Remember, there's, for these crypto companies, there's no regulation whatsoever, no audits, no examinations, no net capital requirements, nothing. I, I would point out that whether the SEC wins or loses means how the courts apply a Howey case from the 1940s dealing with oranges. That is a peculiar way to determine how much we should regulate crypto. I applaud the SEC and their legal team in, in gaining jurisdiction by applying that case. But Congress should vest all authority, uh, or should vest full authority in the SEC uh, to regulate crypto. Uh, no investment area has been the subject of so much investor fraud. No investment uh, promises uh, to undermine the role of the U.S. dollar and to defeat U.S. law enforcement. And yet, uh, Congress sits back and lets the courts decide whether the SEC has jurisdiction by counting oranges in an orange grove in a 1940s orange grove that I'm sure is a suburban subdivision now. So. Uh, uh, I have, uh, uh, I would just say that uh, the SEC certainly has not gone rogue. We need definitive standards, and those standards need to be tough enough to deal with those uh, who would uh, uh, cheat investors, and, uh, um, and I yield back.